Hello, welcome to the Monday, November 13th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. On Friday, we got a quick diary by Austin Long, a student in the sans.edu bachelor's program. And now in his diary, it looks basically at well, what's going on currently with a gasket. We often sort of overlook these old long going threats. So always good to check in with them occasionally to see what's happening. Not really has changed much uh, with uh, this particular bot over the last uh, 10 or so years that it's uh, going around. It's still looking for default passwords, added a couple sort of HTTP vulnerabilities uh, to its arsenal. Apparently, the one particular sample that uh, was captured here by Austin is looking for some Huawei routers with specific vulnerabilities. Best defense against these kind of threats is keep up to date on your router firmware. Remember, sort of once a month, uh, check in if your router is still up to date. And of course, avoid default passwords. And then we got an interesting uh, post by Huntress Lab uh, with details regarding attacks against a number of healthcare, in particular pharmaceutical companies. The common denominator here appears to be a software called Screen Connect. Screen Connect is used by transaction data systems, according to Huntress, and that company actually was recently purchased by a company called Outcomes. These companies are also known for their RX30 and computer RX software. So if you're running that software, you may be running a Screen Connect as well. Once connected to the systems, the attacker then installed, in some cases, additional Screen Connect instances, but also installed AnyDesk, which is, well, other more commonly used remote access software. What makes this uh, even more concerning is not just that legitimate software is being used uh, for exploitation here, which isn't really all that new, but also some of the communication then happens via a legitimate host within transaction data systems, which according to Huntress may indicate that uh, there is a compromised account or that a part of uh, the uh, transaction data system network may be compromised. So it may actually be a supply chain attack. I'm seeing a lot of maze here because there's no confirmation. Huntress apparently tried to read out to transaction data system outcomes, but hasn't been able to really sort of engage with them to figure out what's exactly going on here. And Microsoft's threat intelligence team states that they blocked in their products a number of malicious job skill assessment portals. Apparently what's happening here is that an actor that Microsoft calls Sapphire Sleet, which appears to be associated with North Korea, is trying to trick developers into connecting to these assessment portals in order to basically take tests for for a job and then tricks as part of these assessments the victim into installing malicious software. North Korea has been after developers for quite a while now and has very calmly sort of posted fake job ads and then as part of the interview process tricked developers into installing malicious software. Typically, they send that software directly, I guess, by going via this uh, job portal, which of course requires a username and password to log in. It makes it quite a bit more difficult for any defender than to recognize what's going on here. In particular, the uh, cryptocurrency industry appears to be affected here, which of course has been sort of a longtime target of North Korea. And then just a couple of uh, vulnerabilities I want to mention. Just as a reminder, Sys8 is still a problem. I mentioned it last week and is actively being exploited. So definitely make sure that uh, you take care of that. There is also a new vulnerability in the OpenVPN access server. These vulnerabilities could lead to a denial of service. They could also lead to leaking information from memory. And in extreme cases, as it says here, they may be used for remote code execution. 
OpenVPN Access Server 2.12.2 has the fix for these vulnerabilities. And just to avoid some confusion here, OpenVPN Access Server is the commercial OpenVPN product. If you are running a, one of the sort of open source implementations of OpenVPN that is in my opinion much more common than the commercial version you are probably not affected by these issues well and this is it for today just a quick sort of heads up on the schedule for this podcast i will not have any podcast for the thanksgiving week which is the 20th through 24th thanks and talk to you again tomorrow bye